Canadians may be too complacent if they think that the debt crisis racking Europe cannot happen here. Sure, Canada's federal finances are the envy of the world, but in our medium to long-term future, public finances in several provinces are unsustainable unless things change dramatically and soon. Oh, and here's the shocker. Alberta tops the list. Yes, Alberta, the fuel in our national economic engine, the fire in our current economic performance, is actually the province most in peril. Hi, I'm Brian Lee Crowley, Managing Director of the Macdonald Laurier Institute. Today I'd like to talk to you about how Canada can avoid future debt crises, crises that may seriously affect the credit rating of several provinces and perhaps even force federal taxpayers to bail out those provinces. Because if we keep on the path we're on today, we're either going to need big federal bailouts, or some provinces might have to default on their debts, which would be a serious blow to Canada's reputation and our economy. You may not know this, but Canadian provinces have been in serious debt trouble before. In the Great Depression, five of our provinces needed and received federal bailouts. But if such crises occurred today, they would drag down not just the provinces concerned, but the national economy as well. Just look at recent events in the Eurozone. When a member country of the European Union gets in fiscal trouble, the Union and its economically strongest members face pressure to bail it out. Citizens in other parts of the Union are forced to shoulder the costs of a fiscal lifeline to a sinking partner. Yet they have no control over its policies in order to prevent such crises before they happen. You see, if bailouts are possible, lenders see less risk and will loan money at rates that should only be available to those who can afford more debt. Or put another way, the fiscally challenged economies get a big discount on their borrowing costs, since the markets think they'll be bailed out by the neighbours if they get into trouble. Of course, Europe is not Canada's problem, but our provinces are. So it's worth asking, are Canadian provinces getting unjustifiably low interest rates because lenders believe that Ottawa will never let a province go bust? If true, then profligate provinces have little incentive to mend their ways because they assume Ottawa will bail them out rather than see Canada harmed by a provincial default. And since we do think that's true, that means there's trouble on our horizon. How much trouble? Researchers here at the Macdonald Laurier Institute have figured out how much interest each province would be paying if it were clear that Ottawa would never bail them out. And by the way, a little secret. Though Ottawa's official policy is no bailouts, lenders don't really believe them. So we compared these no bailout rates to what provinces are actually paying. If the no bailout rates are higher than what the provinces are paying now, it suggests that lenders are counting on the federal taxpayer to rescue a province that borrows beyond its means. In other words, no bailout rates are the ones that reflect the real risk of provincial debts going unpaid. We then looked at all the possible economic scenarios for each province over the next 30 years. We looked at literally hundreds of thousands of possible outcomes. We thought about population aging, oil prices, interest rates, and more. So here's what we found. Over the next few years, no province faces a serious possibility of default. That's a relief, at least for now. But don't get too smug. But in a few years, this picture darkens. Due to population aging, we forecast fewer people working, slower economic growth, and higher health care costs in later years. Depending on how quickly interest rates rise from their currently unusually low levels, and assuming that the provinces don't change their health care and other policies, 
some provinces get into really serious trouble in the medium term. Here, take a look at the data for Ontario. It's the most vulnerable in the next 10 to 20 years because of its established pattern of large annual deficits. Alberta, on the other hand, is the most at risk at the 30-year threshold when its annual deficits start to add up to a large and debilitating debt. Alberta's risk is attributable to high deficits, the fact that its population will age more rapidly than other provinces in the future, and because government revenues are heavily dependent on volatile oil and gas prices. Surprisingly, despite its poor fiscal record over many years, Quebec has the lowest probability of default in the future. But lowest doesn't mean low. That province's risk of default is still one in three. Quebec just benefits from having gone through its population aging earlier than other provinces, for example, and from recent efforts to wrestle down its annual budget deficit. Have a look at the numbers for yourself. Over here we have the 20-year default probability column, and on this side, the 30-year. So if bondholders are lending to the provinces at rates that don't really reflect the danger that the provinces won't pay, who will make up the shortfall if a province defaults on its debts? If you answered, I will, go to the head of the class. If a province defaults and Ottawa has to bail them out, every federal taxpayer will be on the hook. But if the federal government is ever asked to bail out a province, it will almost certainly ask that province to clean up its act and live within its means. That, in turn, will be very politically unpopular, as Ottawa will be seen to be forcing spending cuts and tax rises on that province. That is just what we're seeing in Europe today. Those countries that are paying for the bailout of other members of the Eurozone are exacting a price in terms of higher taxes, spending cuts, welfare and benefit reform, and more. The only way for a province to avoid such a miserable fate is for it to start living within its means now, not to borrow more than it can afford, and to have sensible social programs and tax policies that encourage investment and work. Past fiscal crises show that the longer action is delayed, the more painful and politically costly it will be to fix the problem. So perhaps it's time for Ottawa to get the attention of markets and the provinces, either by passing legislation forbidding federal bailouts or by charging the provinces a fee for the free ride they're getting on Ottawa's good credit. Either way, it's time that Ottawa got serious about making it clear that irresponsible behaviour by the provinces costs all Canadians and the national government is going to stop subsidising that bad behaviour. And there's no time like the present to start.